Hello friends. I am going to read you a very special story. And I know we talked about this in the last video. And look, here he is. This is Corduroy. Corduroy is the name of this bear. And just like my friends, Sadie and Gary Bear, he's wearing clothes, isn't he? Do some of your dolls and stuffed animals wear clothes? Wow, Corduroy is wearing clothes too. He's wearing some cute little overalls that are green. And there's something missing on his little overalls. What's missing? Right there. His button is missing, isn't it? Well, we are going to see in this story how Corduroy finds his button. It looks like he's looking, doesn't it? Well, this is a book and it is written and illustrated by Don Freeman. Corduroy is a bear who once lived in a toy department of a big store. Day after day, he waited with all the other animals and dolls for somebody to come along and take him home. We see a clown and a doll and some other stuffed animals. And they are waiting too, aren't they? Wow, that's a big store, isn't it? The store was always filled with shoppers buying all sorts of things, but no one ever seemed to want a small bear in green overalls. But what do we see in this picture? It looks like somebody is looking at him. Then one morning, a little girl stopped and looked straight into Corduroy's bright eyes. Oh, Mommy, she said, look, there's the very bear I've always wanted. Not today, dear, her mother sighed. I've spent too much already. Besides, he doesn't look new. He's lost a button to one of his shoulder straps. Corduroy watched them sadly as they walked away. It looks like she's sad too, doesn't it? Aww. Well, I didn't know I'd lost a button, he said to himself. Tonight I'll go and see if I can find it. Late that evening, when all the shoppers had gone and the doors were shut and locked, Corduroy climbed down from his shelf and he began searching everywhere on the floor for his lost button. Suddenly, he felt the floor moving under him, and quite by accident, he had stepped onto an escalator, and up he went. An escalator are moving stairs, aren't they? Have you ever been on one? Could this be a mountain, he wondered? I think I've always wanted to climb a mountain. Well, he stepped off the escalator as it reached the next floor and there before his eyes was a most amazing sight. Tables and chairs and lamps and sofas and rows and rows of beds. This must be a palace, Corduroy gasped. I guess I've always wanted to live in a palace. 
palace is a large place where kings and queens live, isn't it? He wandered around admiring the furniture. This must be a bed, he said. I've always wanted to sleep on a bed. And he crawled up onto a large, thick mattress. Do you like to climb up on your mom or dad's big bed? I know I do. And I might have even jumped on the bed before. Hmm. <laughs> All at once, he saw something round. Why, here's my button, he cried, and he tried to pick it up. But like the other buttons on the mattress, it was tied down tight. He yanked and he pulled with both paws until pop. Off came the button and off the mattress. Corduroy toppled, bang, and into a tall floor lamp. And over it fell with a crash. Corduroy didn't know it, but there was someone else awake in the store. The night watchman was going his rounds on the floor above when he heard the crash. He came dashing down the escalator to see what was. He thought maybe something happened, didn't he? Now, who in the world did that? He exclaimed. Somebody must be hiding around here. He flashed his light under and over the sofas and beds until he came to the biggest bed of all. And there he saw two fuzzy brown ears sticking up from under the cover. Now, who, whose ears do you think those are? Hello, he said. How did you get upstairs? There was corduroy. Those were his ears. The watchman tucked corduroy under his arm and carried him down the escalator. And he set him on the shelf in the toy department with the other animals and dolls. It looks like Corduroy had a long night, didn't he? Well, Corduroy was just waking up when the first customer came into the store in the morning. And there, looking at him with a wide, warm smile, was the same little girl he'd seen only the day before. Why do you think that she is at the store? I'm Lisa, she said, and you're going to be my very own bear. Last night, I counted what I had saved in my piggy bank, and my mother said I could bring you home. Oh, look at that. Corduroy always wanted a home, didn't he? Shall I put him in a box for you? The sales lady asked. Oh, no, thank you, Lisa answered, and she carried Corduroy home in her arms. Aww. She ran all the way up four flights of stairs into her family's apartment and straight to her own room. Oh, she couldn't wait to get him home, could she? Corduroy blinked. There was a chair and a chest of drawers and alongside a girl-sized bed stood a little bed just the right size for him. The room was small, nothing like that enormous palace in the department store. But look at his smile. This must be 
home, he said. I know I've always wanted a home. Lisa sat down with Corduroy on her lap and began to sew a button on his overalls. I like you the way you are, she said, but you'll be more comfortable with your shoulder strap fastened. So she sewed on the button. You must be a friend, said Corduroy. I've always wanted a friend. Me too, said Lisa, and she gave him a big hug. Oh. The end. Well, thank you for joining us for this uh, story today, and I will be posting a new video soon. I hope you really enjoyed Corduroy as much as I did. Bye-bye.